it is time for me to say goodbye. It's been a wonderful year, one that I will never forget. I've made so many friendships during my travels. Thank you for following along with me and supporting me on the awesome journey. Serving our heroes, selflessly helping and honoring our veterans, service members and their families any way we can. That, in a nutshell, is our mission. It's what the American Legion Auxiliary has been doing for 99 years and what this auxiliary will be doing in the next century and beyond. I believe our organization's tradition of service, not self, will endure longer than the lifetime of anyone within the sound of my voice. During my official visits around the country, I had the privilege of seeing some of the awesome mission-based work done by our members. Our mission in motion with our hearts in every action. Our members often achieve these things while working alongside the American Legion and the Sons of the American Legion. The same has been happening at the national leadership level. American Legion National Commander Brett Rystead, Sons of the American Legion National Commander Greg Doc Gibbs and I have worked together to represent all Legion family members and we work together to honor and advocate for veterans, service members, and military families. For example, the National Commanders and I paid respects to America's fallen military service members laid to rest in the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific, commonly called Hawaii's Punch Bowl. We also paid respects to those killed during the attack on Pearl Harbor. The three of us appeared together on the American Legion's float in the 2019 Tournament of Roses Parade. We were accompanied on the float by other distinguished individuals, including four Medal of Honor recipients. Participating in this widely televised parade helped bring attention to our Legion family. The National Commanders and I have spoken at post homes about membership recruitment being done as a Legion family joint effort. We participated in the Department of Indiana's Operation Race to 100 membership drive, bringing leadership face to face with volunteers. It was a four day trip covering nearly 1,000 miles. What an exciting and memorable time we had. And together in Europe, we paid our respects to our fallen soldiers who made the ultimate sacrifice during the historic D-Day landing at Normandy 75 years ago. We also visited the gravesite of Theodore Roosevelt Jr., who was a decorated veteran and one of the founding fathers of the American Legion. We honored the surviving D-Day veterans and visited service members stationed in Europe. I hope our Legion family teamwork will continue from the grassroots level to the national leadership level and everywhere in between. In keeping with this year's special focus on female veterans and their specific issues and challenges, I was able to spend time with many of them during my official visits. When I was in Arizona, Auxiliary Units 41 and 65 hosted a reception for female veterans. Auxiliary members also hosted a barbecue dinner for some local women veterans at the VA nursing home, where we presented them with crocheted lap robes and shawls. We spent time with them. We listened to their stories. It was just amazing. We saw Heal Her Art, an exhibit of female veterans' paintings. The project, funded partially by an American Legion Auxiliary Foundation grant, is a huge success. One special memory from my official visits is meeting one of the real Rosie the Riveters. Her name is Virginia Ball and she is 94 years young. Her name fits her because she is a fireball. Virginia is an auxiliary member from the Department of Kansas. She is the epitome of service, not self. Virginia and the other Rosie the Riveters were not veterans, but they are heroes. They jumped into America's workforce during World War II to fill the gaps created by the men enlisted to fight. Our Rosies had a major role in the war effort. 
Auxiliary members dedicate their time and talents every day to serving our heroes. They volunteer at veterans' homes. They collect personal care items for projects like Purses with a Purpose, which benefit the homeless. And they provide food, clothing, and supplies at veterans' transitional housing sites like the Home of the Brave and the Guardian House of Saratoga that's specifically for female veterans. I was privileged to visit these homes. The list of mission outreach continues from there. This year, the Auxiliary has collaborated with the nonprofit organization U.S. Vets for the Women Vets on Point project. This project bridges the gap between women veterans and access to the care and support they need. I visited some U.S. Vets facilities and was impressed by what I saw and heard. One female veteran told me she would not be alive today had it not been for the caring employees of U.S. Vets. That's the type of impact the American Legion Auxiliary can make, especially when we collaborate with organizations which, like U.S. Vets, care about veterans as much as we do. It has been a privilege to serve as the American Legion Auxiliary's 99th National President. I owe a debt of gratitude to many people, my husband, William, and my son and his family for their love and support. Team Mississippi for their dedication and hard work. National Commander Brett Rysted and Sons of the American Legion Commander Greg Dot Gibbs. I could not have asked for two finer gentlemen to serve with this year. Tamara Shoemate, Executive Support Director and my assistant, who made sure I was where I needed to be and made my year awesome. And our wonderful staff at the American Legion Auxiliary National Headquarters. Thank you all for making my journey one that I will never forget. As we approach our 100th anniversary, think of how many people our organization has helped and honored through the decades. Let's continue to stand firm in our commitment to veterans, military, and their families. Thank you for a wonderful year, and God bless you all.